club inventory month end counts using a scanner. The key logistic when doing month end counts when club inventory is to coordinate with whoever is responsible for running the point of sale end of day updates. The key is that all point of sale end of days must have been completed prior to the snapshot being taken. If for any reason there are point of sale days that have not been updated, then your inventory has not been reduced by those sales, which means you're going to be starting right off the bat with the wrong counts. Once you've determined that all the point of sale end of days have been run and up to date, to start your count you're going to go to Club Inventory, Inventory Count, Snapshot Inventory. You're going to select which area you're going to take the snapshot for, and because we're using a scanner we're going to flag Start Counts at zero. The partial scanner count will only be flagged if you intend on taking a partial inventory rather than a full inventory. In this case we're going to do a full inventory so we will leave that unchecked and click OK. Once the snapshot is complete you can now take your scanner and do the physical count. Once you've completed collecting the counts through the scanner you will follow the scanner instructions and software for connecting it and downloading the update file to a location on the network. Once you have done that you will then go into Club Inventory Inventory Count Upload Inventory Counts. Again select which area you are in and normally the scanner code will be generic scanner upload. Next you will need to locate the file that the scanner downloaded. Keep in mind that the name for this file varies depending on the scanner and the settings at your local club. We want a preview report first and zero counts default to one normally should be checked. This basically means that if you've scanned something in you didn't input a quantity, the system assumes it's one at least. Which makes sense because if you scan something there must have been something there to scan. Override count allows you to override if there's already been stuff input so it won't add to it, it'll basically overwrite it. And then we'll just view closely. What you'll get is a report that lists all the inventory items that were scanned with their description and SKU number and the quantity that you had on the scanner. The very last page of this report there'll be a listing of any bad UPC codes. These are basically barcodes that the scanner picked up when you scanned but you can't find a corresponding one in Jonas. These would have to be corrected manually or you can input these counts manually through enter item counts. If everything checked out OK then you can rerun this report with the update inventory counts. This doesn't technically update the inventory. It simply takes these counts from the scanner and loads them into our snapshot for us. Now while you're in the process of doing a count or have a snapshot in place, if you receive goods in or do an adjustment through the processing menu, the system will come up and prompt you that there's a snapshot in place and ask if you want to adjust the snapshot based on what you're receiving. This will only happen if you have that flag turned on under inventory areas and also if the date of receipt is dated on or before the snapshot date. You'll notice in the inventory count screen we also have two options in here delete snapshot and reset counts to snapshot. The reset counts can be used if you've uploaded and done manual enter item counts but get confused and I'm not sure where what the correct count should be at this point. You can click reset. This will reset all the counts back to what the snapshot is and then you can rerun the upload. Delete snapshot is just what it says. It physically deletes the entire snapshot and allows you to take the snapshot over again. Be careful with this because the snapshot, remember, when you take it, is based on the current date. 
So if it's taking you several days to do the inventory, deleting it may not be the best method to correct something. Once you've uploaded your accounts and you're fine with them, you can then go to the valuation report and update. For most of these fields, you will take the defaults. Definitely want preliminary report. And at this point, on a preliminary report, this date of record doesn't matter. Usually the flags I want on in here are just these two, which is show variance between actual and snapshot, and print category summary. This will give you a report listing all the inventory that you've uploaded and based on what the system says what the difference is. So if you look through the adjustment quantity column this is telling you the difference between the snapshot and what you manually counted or the scanner took. This is the key column because it's going to show you how much you are out from the physical count to what the system thinks there should be. If there's a large discrepancy on this, you're probably going to want to start investigating why there's a discrepancy on these. Assuming the report checked out perfectly, you would then run this report a second time, but this time instead of preliminary report, you would run final. And again, we want the show variance and the print category summary. The state of record now kicks in and basically this allows me to set the date of record for the inventory log when this inventory is going to hit or this adjustment to my inventory if there is any will hit on my inventory log and on my general ledger posting. At this point you have completed the inventory count, the snapshot is now gone and you can proceed on to the, the next inventory count or continue to receive and adjust as needed.